If you have never used Microsoft Teams before, then you've come to the right place. Maybe you've changed jobs and your old workplace used Zoom and you've never seen Teams in your life. If so, don't be daunted. I've got you covered in this video. Check it out. So Teams are super easy to use, especially if you're starting from the very beginning. There are so many things that it can do, but at its core, you can use it to chat, to make calls, to collaborate, and lots, lots more. Why don't we dive right in and show you some of the basics. So you've just started your brand new job. You're super excited to get going. You've got your brand new laptop. It's all ready to go. Chances are you've been issued with a device that is Windows based, either Windows 10 or hopefully as this one is Windows 11. It doesn't matter because Teams works across all and any devices that you could imagine. You can use it through an application on Windows, on Mac, on Linux, you can also use it through the browser that you have on your devices as well via teams.microsoft.com. And it is compatible with your mobile devices on iOS and Android. But let's assume that you're getting logged onto your device, your laptop at your new place of work and you're just getting started. Where do you go? Well, you should have the Teams client for work and school on your taskbar here. Let's click to open it and you're gonna be taken right into Teams. So what have we got? Teams is pretty instinctive to navigate. You wanna start by getting familiar with the icons that are on this left hand taskbar. And the very first one that you have is activity. Now this is going to show you everything that you need to catch up on. This is kind of like your unread emails in Outlook. And this is gonna show you any mentions that you have or anything that you've missed essentially. So we can go through this and it's gonna show us things like Irvin here has mentioned remote living. Now mentioning is something that is very, very powerful in Teams. You can uh, use the at uh, button to mention someone or uh, something like a group. And we can see that Irvin here has mentioned the remote living team. So that's gonna mention a group of people and they're all gonna get that and get this notification. So uh, I can actually send a message back to Irving here. I can actually at Irving and say, great. And that will call him out. Awesome stuff. Nice and simple. So you can go through all of your mentions here and catch up with anything that you've missed. And chances are, when you start on your first day of a new job, you're probably already gonna have something in here because people know you're coming, that you're starting, and you'll probably have been added to some teams already, and you've got some mentions and some welcome messages and that sort of thing. So take a look here first and see who's said hi to you. Cool stuff. The next place you're gonna spend a lot of time is the chat. So in here, you can do lots of chats. You can do one-to-one -one chats. You can do group chats as well. And really handy here is at the very, very top, you have a chat space all for yourself. Uh, your name brackets you, and you can see I'm logged in here as Adele Vance to Teams. So what Adele can do here is she can send all sorts of things to herself. She can send herself a reminder message to do something and she can access this on any of her devices she can access teams on her mobile device a little later and see that message she can also send herself attachments or or, or anything like that and it's just a handy place that is just for you within microsoft teams here we have an example of a group message that uh, has been created between uh, a few different people so i'm logged in as adele vance here but i'm also talking in a group with megan and johanna or johanna um, and you can see here the names at the top. Now what you can do when you create a group is you can give this group a name because that's not necessarily the most descriptive. It's, if it's quite informal, leave it like that for sure, but you can edit the group name and give it something more descriptive. Easy to set up a new chat message. So you can do the, the new message button. You can find the person you want to talk to. Let's say I want to send a message to my colleague Nesta. There he is. It fills that in for you. Let's just say hi, Nesta, just to save some time. <laughs> and there we go. So what we can see here is that Nesta has a yellow mark next to him, which means that he is potentially away from his device or was last seen a number of minutes ago. Green means you're available. Yellow generally means that you're away or you're appearing away. You can appear, you could be offline as well with a little cross symbol or uh, red means busy or do not disturb. 
group chats just as easy to do you can uh, add in one or more people so we can select Christy there and we can add in um, Miriam nice and easy to do and we can send a nice group message really cool stuff so that is chats and what you can do as well as this builds up you can pin your chat to the top so it might be that you are going to regularly be in this chat and want that to be at the top of your screen so you can pin that chat and it appears at the very top for you there's lots of other cool stuff you can do with chats as well you can pop it out in a separate screen and keep it open like that you can also Mark things as unread, you can unpin them, you can mute them if you're getting a lot of noise on group chats and you need to concentrate. And you can put apps in the chat as well. You can leave the chat and delete the chat as well. So that's chats. Next, we have Teams. Now, chances are you're going to be spending a lot of time in Teams and you're going to get invited to these or you can create them yourself. And this is where you're going to be spending a lot of your time working on documents. And a team... Uh, consists of a name of a team and channels and the default channel is called the general channel every team is going to have one of these when it's first created but you can also create different channels we can see American Design Awards and PNW Coffee Social Campaign so if we want to create a new channel for this design team we can click on add a channel and there are different types of channels that we can add we can add a standard channel that everyone on the team has access to. We can add a private ch channel, which specific teammates have access to. And if supported, you can also add shared channels more recently, which will enable you to invite external guests to your organization to participate in Teams. Very nice indeed. So within Teams, you have uh, some tabs within the channels. So if we go into the sales and marketing one here and click on general We can see some posts here, which uh, is effectively chats in teams so you can do a new conversation in the team uh, and you can so sort of Say hello team And you can add smiley faces and giffies and all sorts of cool stuff There's a lot of way to make teams very very personal Which is a really cool thing up here we can see tabs and one of the other default tabs is files and within files you can see any files that are there for you or folders and you can create new ones as well so you can create a new folder or a new word document and give it a name and you can even upload from your computer or other uh, areas you can do different views you can share copy links and you can synchronize to your local machine really cool stuff we have some other tabs here such as the product launch event tab that we can see here and this takes us to a task planner board where we can see to-do lists and what's going on what's on track what's at risk that sort of thing and we can add more of these as well we can add uh, new tabs and choose by app uh, what we want to be in these tabs so that's teams we also get to see our calendar here so we can uh, keep track of all our meetings and appointments uh, So we're bang up to date with everything we need to do in our working day and this in most organizations is going to be exactly the same as Your Outlook calendar if you're working on exchange online or even in a hybrid organization Which uh, as a user you probably don't know about or care about but chances are your team's calendar is going to match your Outlook calendar It's very unusual for that not to be the case in most organizations now so here you can um, double click anywhere in the calendar to add a new appointment so you can put in the title right here add any attendees that you might want to add so let's add in our old friend Nesta you can schedule the time that you want you can choose to repeat the meeting if you want you can put the meeting in a particular channel within a team should you choose to but you don't have to you can add a location and put in some notes and click on send now Nesta or anyone else who's invited to that meeting is going to get an invitation to join that meeting at that particular time and you have a nice little handy join button for when the meeting takes place and you can click on that 
And before you join, you can turn on your camera, make sure all your audio is all good to go, and then join the meeting. You can also uh, join meetings in different ways. You can click the, uh, uh, the join with an ID um, button at the top here. If the meeting is uh, private and has a specific ID to uh, be able to join, you can click on the meet now button and invite your colleagues to an ad hoc meeting. Or on this new meeting button, there are lots of different options for you to schedule a meeting. You can schedule other types of uh, meetings and events as well, such as a live event, which is a broadcast one to all type meeting, which is good for a uh, um, town halls and that sort of thing. Uh, a webinar, you can do webinars or virtual appointments as well. So lots of cool stuff you can do in your team's calendar. Then we have calls. Now, calls, uh, you can make one-to-one -one calls here or with your contacts. You can uh, do a, a quick video call or an audio call. And if your team's uh, system in your organization is connected to a telephony system, then you can also do um, unified comms dialing as well. So um, if you have that, your IT people will tell you about that and you'll have a, a Teams phone number assigned to you potentially, which uh, means you can use Teams voice. But uh, that's where you can make calls. You can add contacts into here as well, add them in and build up your, uh, your, your list of contacts. Then we have files. In the file section, in the home page, we can see all of the recent files that you have accessed while working within Teams. And there are lots of places in Teams where you can find files. You can find them within Teams, you can tie to your own OneDrive, which is your own personal storage area in your Office 365 account. There's lots of places you can go. But this is the recent um, files area where you can see what you've recently accessed. You can also click on My Files as well. And here it's going to show you your OneDrive and all the files that you have here. So you can see your folders, your files. You can see a recently added doc here, Adele's doc that I added just a short time ago. And you can open these up very, very easily right within Teams. It's going to open the file for you right within Teams there. And you can work on your document without actually even leaving the Teams application. If you don't like that, then you can click on the editing button here. And you can open in the browser or you can open in the full desktop Microsoft Word app. Lots of wonderful options for you to work on your content. We can close out of that. Let's take a look at some more files options here. So that's your OneDrive. We've also got a shared area here. This is gonna show you all of the content that has been shared with you by others. So we can see we've got some uh, video content here, some Excel docs, PowerPoints, Word docs, etc., And we can see when that was shared and who by. So this is content that has been shared explicitly with you that you can access. By the same token, you can see on the Shared By You tab what you have shared with others. You've shared some of your content, potentially from your own OneDrive, as we can see here, from personal OneDrive of Adele Vance, from her documents. And you can uh, go into that content right from here as well. Equally, we can see what you've downloaded. So. You can download files quite easily from uh, right within Microsoft Teams, as I did with this one just a little earlier. If I quickly go back to my files, I can do the same again. I might want to uh, use the three dots or the ellipses as they're called, right click and you get lots of options here. And I can download that doc to my local computer and it's gonna put it in my downloads folder. If I go back to downloads now, there it is. It shows me that I've downloaded this document. And if I click on it, it's going to take me right to my local downloads folder. And I've got that local copy. Then we have some quick access here. So it's going to show us some items in the quick access section, which are intelligently interpreted by teams as things that you're likely to go into more frequently. So I've got a, a team here, which is the market project team. So I can click right here and get right to that team's documents. Um, instead of having to go Teams and then find that particular area. Contoso Marketing as well, that's a, another uh, file set, which is really cool stuff. And we can add more places into that quick access area as well if we want to. And finally in the file section, we can add additional cloud storage. Now this is only available if your organization supports it. And what you can do is you can link into Teams, and this is really cool stuff, you can link to your Dropbox, your Box, your Ignite, and your Google Drive. So you could, if you have these um, cloud storage services and you want to link from them and access them right from within Teams, you can do so. But this has to be explicitly enabled by your IT and your company. 
and they may have valid reasons why they're not supporting that. So you might not see that there. So that's files. Chances are you might see more things on this left hand taskbar here, but maybe you won't. But if you want to add more, you can click on the three dots or ellipses again, and you can search for apps and add more things in. So I might want this tasks and planner to open. And when I click on it, it will pop it here for me and it will see all of my tasks and my to-do list. Now, I think that's a really handy thing to have in Teams all of the time. So what I can do here is I can right click there and I can pin that. And if I click off onto files again, you'll notice that doesn't go away. So pinning to your taskbar is really powerful indeed. Last couple of things before we wind up, we have the apps store here. So if we click on apps, again, what you see here is largely going to depend on what your organization has allowed and what it has published to you and how secure or otherwise uh, they want to be. But here you can browse apps and you can see um, apps that uh, might be useful to you. Things like Viva Insights. I mean, you can filter by Microsoft apps. You can filter by third-party apps or even custom apps that your organization might have produced. And if you click on things like these, you can click on and open them up if they're already on there. Or uh, you can, uh, say, click on GitHub and add it. So if you see the open button, then you've already added it and you just need to reopen it and potentially pin it. But um, if you haven't installed it before, you'll need to add here. Uh, or you can even add it to a, a particular team. Really, really cool stuff. Very, very powerful indeed. And finally, one great way to find your way around it is the help. So at the bottom here, we have our help and we can browse things like topics and it's gonna open up and uh, show us all the cool stuff that we can uh, learn about in Teams, it's going to show you how you can change your background, how you share your screen, try the new Teams, because what I'm showing you here is not the latest version. I wish I could, but I, I can't get it just yet because it's only available on pure Windows and I'm connected to a virtual Windows 365 machine. So as soon as I can show you that, I'll do so in another video. It's going to show you all sorts of great things on how to work with files and Teams and channels. You can look at training as well. There's cool stuff back right into Teams here, right? Your fingertips It's going to show you how to do the basics, how to set up and customize, how to access Teams and channel. You can see what's new as well. Um, what has uh, been developed for desktop and the web. So that's this, this client is desktop and web would be the web browser. You can see what's new for specific devices like iPhones and Androids. VDI means virtual desktop and Microsoft Teams devices, which is uh, something that you would see in meeting rooms. So. Absolutely fantastic indeed. And one final tip, if you click into your search bar here, you can search for messages, files, and more, or this handy tip that a lot of people don't know about. If you click the forward slash button, it's gonna give you a list of handy commands that you can do. Very, very nice indeed. So have a look through those, and this is a really good starting point for you in getting to know Microsoft Teams. And that's it, folks, for another video. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed getting to know Microsoft Teams from the very beginning. That is just the tip of the iceberg. Stay tuned for another video coming real soon on much, much more on Microsoft Teams. There is so much stuff we can cover, so much to learn. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your comments, your likes, your shares, and subscriptions mean so much to me. And it's massively appreciated. So I'm going to leave it there and I'll see you on the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.